Hello, and welcome to this introductory video on Huygens' principle. In this video, we're going to take a look at this basic idea behind Huygens' principle and see how that simple idea actually results in this phenomenon known as diffraction, which means how Huygens' principle gets waves of any kind to bend around corners. So the idea is that if we're thinking about these pictures where we were drawing, um, for instance, like in the Doppler shift video, we were drawing that there was some source and it was emitting nice circular waves, and we were talking about each point on the circle representing the, say, crest of that wave. So all of that was one peak, and there's the next peak further out, and it's just spreading out, moving away from that source. Huygens' principle says, well, Sure, that's how you can represent it, but what's actually happening is every single point along here is its sort of own source for another circular wave, or really spherical, if we're doing this in 3D. And so what happens is each one of those emits a little bit of a wave, and you can form the next one as the superposition of those. That's how you get the next wave from. Okay. And it works whether you're talking about circular waves or even plane waves. If I just take a couple of little dots along here, and I th imagine emitting circular waves from all of those, well, it would go around like that. All right, so big ones. But the superposition of them just gives me that next wave front. So that's the idea. And that simple idea leads to some very interesting um, phenomena. So here we are, two simple uh, descriptions, or actually it seems like more of a complicated way of getting the next wave front, but it does have some cool results. So this next wave front, simply the superposition of the fact that in the previous case, all the circles were emitting, etc. So I can do it again here. These ones would have done something like that, and that's why we were getting this, and so on and so forth. All right, so the say it works for both the circular and the spherical or the plane wave case. So then what? Why is this useful? Well, it seems we've unnecessarily complicated the idea of a wave front by putting all these little points as sources. Well, it might indeed seem that way, but let's imagine this thing continues on lots of circles all the time, sure, but it encounters something which is a barrier. So it's got some corners, and this plane wave is moving towards it. Well, when it's right up against it, and I start drawing my little wavelets, um, which is what these little points can be called as emitters of little wavelets themselves that add up to give the overall wave. So as I do this, and I get my next superposition, then I can see what's happened. Certainly, I've cut out bits of light, or bits of the wave. And this is why things start to get weird, because everybody agrees on this. You, you've obstructed part of the wave. Now, if it weren't doing anything special, what you would expect is for these bits to just come out like this, right? Because I excluded all the rest on the corners. But the annoying part of this is that we all know that if this was like a water wave, well, it's bent actually around the corners. And if I happen to be talking through a doorway or something, then you know that you can hear around the corners of that doorway or hear around the corners of streets noises from in the street. So this clearly can't be the picture. You don't have to be standing in the gap in order to actually receive that wave. You know that it's going to bend around those corners. But how and why would it do such a thing? Well, let's backtrack a bit, clear this diagram up for a moment. So I'll take all those waves away, all those wave fronts, and ask the question, what happens right when the wave front is about to exit? As we said, if you don't invoke Huygens' principle, you would suggest that it just keeps moving and creates that sort of geometric shadow, or fills the geometric shadow of that opening with the wave and nothing on either side. But if you draw in your wavelets, or your little sources for the wavelets, 
And then you imagine those are emitting their circular waves. Well, look, I can draw a circle around that one. I can draw a circle around that one and a circle around that one. Great, what have I achieved? Well, let's do the superposition now. All right, so there are my three initial wavelets. Let's pick a new color now to draw in what happens for the superposition of these things. So there is my superposition. Then, of course, I can start with some new points on here. So four this time, because it's slightly bigger. I can draw in my circles. And then I can go to yet another color to grab the next sort of superposition. So I trace along. And I can draw in new points. Right, and I can draw in circles for that. And I can draw in a superposition. Go back to sort of yellow. Right, and you can see now that this has nicely provided a sort of mechanism by which our wave is now spreading out and slightly rounding these corners. And that is exactly the sort of thing that does happen. So this principle, this idea that each point along the wavefront can be thought of as an emitter of a little bit of a wave itself um, is giving you exactly the right description for what happens when you encounter these barriers. This weird spreading and bending is exactly what diffraction is describing.